you want to ask any question, you are most welcome. I'm wondering if it's possible to be a, a devoted satsangi and, and make progress on the path. If you, if you just stay at, you know, if you do your life work, you go to work and you do your meditation and you keep the four vows at, as best as you can. And even if you don't come to India every year, um, can, you know, is that, can you still make progress and be a devoted satsangi? It's Sister, to coming to India is not very essential. Our meditation is more essential. The love, the devotion we build within ourselves, the atmosphere we create of, due to our meditation of love and devotion, that's more essential than to run to Dera. I was hoping you would say that. Thank you. When you're hoping that, then why do you want me to repeat it again and again? <laughs> well, I was hoping to get closer because I haven't been in a small group before with you, so thank you. One thing you were saying yesterday that we should be treated like an Indian people where it suits you. Another thing, there is so much confusion even to sit in the front seat and the back seats and the middle seats. You know, they in satsang sit even five hours before that. How can you people do that? Satsang is being held at ten o'clock in the morning and they are occupying their seat five in the morning. How can you rough with them like that? It's impossible that you can, uh, I mean, uh, rough the wrong with them. But they have to go through. It's heavily raining and they are all sitting outside on the roads without any grumbling. I think that's why I came to India, to, to see how good they are, to learn from them. Thank you. Yes, brother. Um, is the mic on? Please. Um, I have two questions, Master. We are told in Sant Mat that our life is predestined, and this would seem to include breaking the vows we take at the time of initiation. For this reason, it seems to be very easy to justify whatever we do because it is our karma. At the same time, we are told that this is a path of struggle. You tell us to fight the mind with the mind, to battle with the mind against the lower impulses they pull us away from the path. Can breaking the vows ever be justified by the idea of predestination? Oh, no. Or should we experience remorse or guilt at our failure? What attitude do you want us I to have? I think we should, we should feel more guilt in our conscience when we break the vows. May I ask another our question? Our attitude should be that. Um, about this struggle in our lives, if I have a very heavy problem in my life, and the weight of it seems too much to bear. Can I give this burden to the Master, or is it my role to carry it alone? You can throw your burden away from your mind. Let it go on anybody's shoulder. Don't worry. Just throw it from your shoulder. Let anybody take it. Because one thing we know it's a predestined. We have come with a certain destiny to go through. So then why should we carry that burden on our mind? If we cannot change anything, let us face it. Why should we worry about it? Sometimes it's very difficult. It doesn't seem to go. You see, this meditation is nothing to prepare ourselves to go through the events of our life without losing much of our balance. Meditation prepares us to face the events of life, sometimes even smilingly. Not that we can change them. We can't change them. But we can face them more bravely. Can we eliminate them? No, we no. cannot. But we can eliminate the suffering, mitigate the suffering of those the events. You may not feel the suffering of those events, but you may have to go through those events of life. Thank you, Master. I was wondering when the disciple sits for meditation and the disciples filled with love and devotion for the master, should they still sit in that love and devotion or do they bring the love and devotion up to the eye center? Sister, no question of sit, only sitting in meditation with love and devotion and then bringing the love and devotion. Once you are filled with love and devotion, love and devotion doesn't leave you even till last. It's not that you need it for a certain stage. 
and then you have to throw it out then you grow and grow in that love and devotion grow so much to become one with the father father is nothing but love christ said god is love that very love and devotion grows well i was i was reading in um philosophy of the masters that when the disciples love reaches the heart of the master it returns back to the disciple in double fold means when you love the master actually you are increasing your own love for the master you are, you are increasing your own love growing your own love and devotion for the father you are actually loving yourself okay. you are growing in love master doesn't need our love we need our love to grow to become the father that we have nothing else in our mind but the father that is growing in love for the father bulla says they nothing to talk about god except god there's nothing else to talk about and gurunanak says guru 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 karban more he says what can i talk except guru there's nothing in this creation i see without guru that's all what i see that's all what i have to say what else to talk i don't know what else to talk that is the height of love you don't have to set aside that love after reaching a certain stage you have to live in that love then yes that is swami maharaj it's with great joy i see you i bring a question from my husband he's been very very supportive to me in the several years i've been on the path but since the beginning of the year he's been filled with inner pain and inner turmoil so he asked me to bring you this question how can a husband who is not initiated open his heart more to his satsangi wife and to faith in sant mat you see what is the mystery about it he has so much faith in you he has so much in love with for you that he wants to open everything what he has within himself he wants to share everything with you no mystery about it i will tell him thank you master yes please i cannot speak very loud i have a question to ask you yes please i've read it in the books that if one has reached a certain stage in his lifetime he does not have to come back is that true if one has a if one has reached a stuck a certain stage within he does not have to return well brother i have so many time discussed this point if we are not attached to any worldly object worldly face in this creation even there is not much spiritual progress to our credit within we do we do not come back at all if on the other hand we are very strongly attached to someone in this creation or something and we may have a little progress to our credit even within we do have to come back to clear that thank you Master I want to thank you for the support that I've gotten to my wife who is also not a satsangi when I was in Bombay she was not willing to let me come and this time she was much different and I want to thank you very much for that another well brother we are not all born satsangis everybody has one's own time and we need individual convictions and everybody has a time I understand that but I just want to thank you for oh, most welcome most welcome accommodating and thank you for also blessing the food and the things that we brought today and the prashad that we get i did have a question when you bless the the things and the prashad is there anything do you have a is there anything that you do when you're at doing that at least it will at least the prashad will we, we remind you of, remind you of the path and the teaching and there's more than enough thank you master hi um I think everybody is just saying thank you because we we know sometimes like you say we keep you on your toes and we can be demanding but we really enjoy the time here. Um I think that I may have the opportunity to do seva. Um I may be wrong but I think so at the hospital. And so Are I, you a trained nurse? Yes. Hmm? Yes, they have my records there. Yes, you are most welcome to come anytime. So I've been thinking a lot about seva and listening when you say things 
you know, in these meetings about seva. And the last thing you said a few days ago was about as long as it's unselfish seva. And could you please tell me your definition of unselfish seva? I'm not following your question. What is selfish seva? You, you said... No, yesterday some lady was asking me a question when I'm doing my government job or my company's job, is it a seva? Yes. I said, you are doing that job for your own self. How can it be a seva? Yes. But a few days before that, um, it's taken me a while to get up the nerve to come up here. <laughs> a few days before that, you said, at the end of something, you said, as long as it's unselfish seva. And I just... When you are being paid for it, how can it be unselfish? But this was seva for the master, so we No, wouldn't... no. The lady's question was that I am being paid for my job. But can it be selfish seva when you're doing it for the master also? No. It can't be selfish. It can't be selfish seva. Is it selfish if you're doing... You see, if we do it for our ego and for our recognition, then it is not pure seva. It's conditioned seva. If we do it to create humility within us, to create love and devotion for others within us, Seva is all also with the attitude of our mind, how we serve others, with what attitude we serve others, what is our motive of serving others. Motive is more important. What is the right motive? What is the right attitude? Humility. To please another person. Okay. Thank you. Maharaji, where I live, I am the only satsangi, but there are some followers of Kirpal Singh, were there. I want to know what my attitude should be. Can I have satsang with him? Well, sister, as far as we are concerned, we have no restriction on anybody. I always tell at the time of initiation, you are absolutely free to go anywhere in the world, provided you don't compromise with your core principles. Okay, thank you. There's no restriction on anybody. Okay. All righty. To your left. Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> you said that the Lord is the husband and the soul is the bride. Yes. Um, the bride is taken into the bridal chamber. The marriage is consummated. But thieves break in and wreak havoc, make havoc. Um, will everything be all right in the end? Christ said, ultimately, there will be one shepherd and one fold. That is what comes in the New Testament. Ultimately, there will be one shepherd and one fold. Even the lost sheep, stray sheep, will be brought back to the fold. And ultimately, there will be one shepherd and one fold. That is what we have been told. Okay. Beloved Maharaji, I have been asked to ask a question on behalf of a seeker who is staying in Delhi but has not been allowed to not been able to attend these meetings. May I have your kind permission to read her question? What do you mean by, is a foreigner? She is a foreigner and she is here, but she has a small baby I and see. she cannot come. come because she cannot leave the baby for so long. You see, I have always advised, never come with your children. She realizes that, but she has asked me to ask this question. Yes, she can write any number of them. She can ask any number of them. Would you rather that she wrote the question? She has written a long letter All right, to you. you can ask. There's no problem. Whether it's yours or hers, it makes no difference. It's, it's, uh, these are her words. She says, If initiation is taken and one enters the fifth spiritual region, is it still possible to choose to reincarnate over and over, even to the final dissolution of this one universe no question of choosing for the purpose, right there. Nobody, huh? nobody can come back I'm nobody asking, would like to choose even I'm asking her question for the purpose of helping humanity I think it's the Bodhisattva idea one who whose humanity is this he knows better about his humanity than us I beg your pardon his humanity belongs to the Lord and he can better take care of humanity than us. Mm. What will she do to better the humanity by coming here? We cannot look after our own selves here in this creation. How can we better the humanity here? It's true. The second part of her question is, and if not, 
Is it possible to remain here and stay connected somehow with the Master's or Father's guidance without taking here initiation? No. No. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yes, please. Master, I wanted to ask you what you do when you feel that the Master is turning you away. What do you do with that feeling? What do you mean by turning you away? Well, sometimes he may say something that um, makes you feel like he doesn't want you anymore. I think, I think mostly, sister, we analyze ourselves always. We try to analyze and dissect the words, and then we start feeling self-pity on ourselves. Well, that and make ourselves miserable for nothing. Well, that kind of is what I think too, but... We, we may turn ourselves back. We may turn back to the Master. Master will never turn his back from us. I wanted also to ask you, I've heard you say this time about believing in yourself and having self-confidence. And at one time, a long time ago, I asked you about that, having confidence. And you told me to stay steadfast to my principles. And I have tried to do that somewhat now, in, you know, since you've told me that. And I think it has helped a little bit, but I'm still really lacking in confidence. And I, I want to know, I mean, I've heard you talk about it, so I know it's important. You've told me it's important. And you see, we must have faith in ourselves that we can do it. We are going to do it, and we must do it. We must build faith within ourselves. But the faith in yourself, is that, that's different than having faith in, in the Master, is, isn't it? When you will have faith in yourself, you will also build faith in the Master. So the, but there, you have to start with yourself. Yes. And the way to do that, it still remains the same. You have to stay steadfast to your principles. Actually. If we have a principle and we cannot abide by it, we cannot stick to it, we are always wavering about them. We have no faith in ourselves. Sometimes I found that staying steadfast to your principles is a very difficult thing to do in a world where there is hardly any principle or values. It seems very difficult. Then the, see, when we cannot stand by them, then we try to justify their failures. To justify them? Yes, then we try to justify the the necessity of this. Okay. Thank you. Maharaji? Yes, please. Would you please explain to me what it means when you say that something becomes automatic or happens automatically? Something happens automatically? Yes, this is a phrase which you often use. What does it mean, please? Can you uh, refer to me in which... I'm thinking particularly about our worldly work and how we do it. When our worldly work happens automatically, becomes automatic, what, what do you mean by that? I don't know with what, with what reference you are talking about. I mean, in so many phrases I use automatically. I just, just uh, Mr. Sethi has said, if you are able to eliminate your ego and uh, develop humility, you will automatically go back to Father. You are just reading Guru Sahib Shabbat. Automatically, the world is used at many places. So it's about eliminating the ego. I mean, it, the world is used in many senses, in many places. Unless I know what particular, with particular sentence you are referring to, I mean, how can I explain? Some time ago, I asked you about my own work. Um, yes. And I said that it is very involving intellectually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I asked you whether it was advisable to find some work which was less involving, which was simpler. Mm -hmm. And you told me that the work becomes automatic. And when? I'm s sorry? When it becomes automatic. I must have said something. When it becomes automatic. If I remember correctly, your words were, it becomes automatic. You see, the worldly works automatically go on. The events of our life automatically will go on proceeding, one after the other. We don't have to think about them. But we should continue with our meditation. 
do these things go on automatically even when we're not aware that it's automatic? Our destiny is set automatically, it will take its own shape. Automatically events will come and go, events will come and go. Is there anything that we can do in our work to make us more aware of that besides meditation? Aware of what? More aware, more conscious that things are happening automatically and that we are not doing them. You see, this destiny, whether you are aware or whether you are not aware, is not going to change. Destiny is set by the Father, it will go automatically. We have to go through it automatically whether we are aware of it or not aware of it. It hardly makes any difference. Thank you. Whether you know after four years I am going to face this event of my life or whether you are unconscious about it, you don't bother what's going to come after four years. But the events will be the same. You have to face the same situation. Supposing anybody tells you there are so many palmistry and so many other things you see, many fads are also have come in that after four years you are going to meet a car accident. You will suffer for four years unnecessarily by knowing it. If you have to suffer car accident, you will suffer car accident when the time comes. But why suffer for these four years? Suffer then when the situation comes. We are always running to these palmists and here and there and what is in my hand and how many, what is going to do, this and that. What is the sense of all that? If they tell you the truth, it means it is already written, which you have to go through. If it is already written, then what is the sense of knowing it before? It will come, whatever is written. Why are we anxious to know what we are going to through? Going through? Thank you. Master, all of us who have come here are, have really reached the height of our whole lives, just sitting at the feet of the living Master. Also, the, the graciousness and love has encompassed us all. Um, the Sevadars have been so wonderful, I would like to thank each one of them. Several of us have come from British Columbia, Canada, Victoria, Up Island, and Vancouver, where you so graciously visited us in 1970. They asked me, if you meet Master personally, would you please give our Radha Swami love and greetings to Master? So I'm asking you, Master, please, would you send your love and Radha Swami greetings well, sister, back to them? Sister, Radha Swami. my Radha Swami and greetings and uh, love, it is to everybody, wherever they are there. One and all here and there, they are all very dear and dear to me. It hardly makes any difference who could come or who could not come, but they are all the same to me. Thank you. Master, I have uh, two short questions from Masit Sangi, who has been recently initiated from Brazil. He asks, um, he had been initiated before by another master before coming on the path, and he would like to know sh if he owes any sort of courtesies towards this master in advising him. He knows the best. Let him decide himself. If he has to tell him... Uh, that is for him to decide. To fa okay. The other one is, he had a, so, a short passage with a sort of, um, another sort of religion in Brazil that has to do, plays a bit with spirits and things like that. And he, he has still some charms and things like that. He wants to know if he should throw them away. Well, and... well sister, Santma's teachings are very clear. Mm -hmm. He can't dabble here and there. If he has to follow the path, he has to follow the path. He must know what he's going to do. He should read the books thoroughly and he will understand the teachings very clearly. Okay. Every little question and doubt has been discussed in the letters. Okay. Thank you. Um, life in, in this creation um, is, is a veil of, of tears and yet it is this pain that gives us a quest for truth and um, makes us creative. Um, it is said that God is worshipping himself through us. Is this a true statement? Well, I have said it here so many times, and you must have read or heard the tapes. Yes. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm correct in saying that, that 
um, God is worshiping himself through us. You see, without his grace, nobody can even think of the Father. Without his grace, we can never come in contact with any mystery. Without his grace, we can never be initiated. Without his grace, we can never get that opportunity and the facility and the environment in which we can build our meditation. So every step the Father is there. So naturally, he is worshipping himself through us. He is affording us an opportunity and environments and facilities to come back to him. Being within us, he is pulling us from within. He is the one who is pulling us. He is the one who is to be pulled. And he is the one who is preparing us for the pull. Everything is in his hand. What else we can say? And, and in, in essence, it is, it is him who has made the first the first move. By, by that I mean in the beginning. It was he is the one who has sown that seed. Christ said, I have come for the marked sheep, the allotted sheep. Who has marked those sheep? Who has allotted those sheep? Him. So marking is done by him. Shepherd only comes to collect them and look after them and take them back to the landlord. Sheep belongs to him. Not the shepherd. Because ultimately there will be one fold and one shepherd. Thank you very much. In philosophy of the masters, uh, on, in the section on Dharma, the great master talks of conservation of the vital fluid. I wonder if you could talk about that. Well, the main thing is that we must preserve our energy as much as we can. And we should not unnecessarily waste it. Can you tell us how we can practically do that? Yeah, just preserve it. Everybody understand how to do it. Read that book thoroughly. You will know it. Thank you. Please. How can I strengthen my willpower? Well, brother, just by meditation. You have to fight with your mind to attend to meditation. And meditation helps you to be strong and to strengthen your meditation. Master, I have two questions. Yes, please. Um, if, if I had an article of clothing that was blessed as Parshad and I become attached to that article of clothing, is that, is that bad? Is that um, harmful to have that attachment? What do you mean by attaching to the clothes? Don't well, you have something better to be attached? I'm... <laughs> No, no, I'm, I mean I'm attached to it because it is blessed by you. Then you then? Then it's all right to be attached to it. What do you mean attached to well, it? Well, I feel like an attachment to it now. Hmm? I feel like I have an attachment to it now because it's blessed. Yes? I feel um, attached to my sweater because you blessed it. <laughs> then use it. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Master? Uh, he would translate for me. Yes, please do. <coughs> Maharaji, I'm a first comer. Listening to satsangis, surprisingly, I very often hear expressions like, Master has directed my life in this way, he is doing it right for me, or he is solving my problems. My question is, as people formulate it, this seems to concern the, the body master. Could you please tell me something about the way in which the outer or perhaps the inner master is guiding us? Brother, we have to go through our destiny. We have a set destiny which we have to go through. Master can help us to go through the destiny cheerfully without losing our balance. If we attend to our meditation, we live on the principle of Santmat, it becomes easier for us to go through the destiny. You can call it Master is guiding you to go through the destiny or with the grace of the Master you are going through your destiny very cheerfully. These are just terms to explain certain things. But you cannot change your destiny. You have to go through that destiny. 
But you have to be prepared to go through those events of life. Because you cannot change those events of life, you have to adjust to those events of life. Then there's no problem. When we refuse to adjust to the events of life, then we become miserable. If somebody has died, he was to die and he has died. If we refuse to accept the fact that he has gone, we are the one to suffer, but the soul is not come, going to come back. He has gone. Winter has to come, summer has to come. You cannot change the cycle of weather. If you refuse to adjust to the weather, you are the one to shiver or sweat the warm weather. If you adjust to the summer and to the winter, winter will pass, summer will pass. There is no problem. So similarly, events of life we have to face. We have to face the effects of good and bad karmas. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are unhappy. Because we have all good and bad karmas. Combination of good and bad karmas have given us this birth. Sometimes we are weeping, sometimes we are smiling. Because we have to adjust to the all events of life. And meditation definitely helps us to go through those events of life. You can give the credit to master, you can give the credit to anybody. But we have to prepare ourselves to face the destiny. Any other question? Could you tell us please some, something about the inner and the outer master and their function? You see, the outer master has to put us on the path, fill us with love and devotion for the Father, and to guide us that we remain steadfast on the path, and to push us on the path. Inner master pulls us from within and guides us within back to our destination. Thank you. I have a question, Father. I have some friends to practice yoga and want to listen to an inner voice. Now a friend asked me if it is right to sit on a small chair and cover the head with a blanket while listening to the inner voice. I agreed with it, but didn't tell to shut the ears because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this. Is this right? I'm not following your question. You are doing some yoga? Please? You are doing some yoga? Yes. Then? Hatha yoga. Then? There's no harm in learning it. You can practice Hatha yoga. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm myself practice Hatha Yoga. There's no harm, it's okay. It's good for health. Hatha Yoga is very good for health, but it has no spiritual benefits. Mm -hmm. You see, these Hatha Yogas or some other type of Yogas were invented when people used to retire from their life and go to the forest for meditation. They don't have tennis I mean, courts there to play, or hockey and football to play their exercises. They have to do all sorts of exercises within their small huts. So these exercises were invented by those people to keep the body fit so that they can attend to meditation. This is the means to attend to your meditation so that your body remains healthy and fit. But this is not a spiritual path to go back to a path. Just a substitute for some other, any other good exercises. Now, gymnasium and so many halls are there where people do hard exercise and all that. It's just like that, nothing else. Thank you, Prabhupada. Master, I'm on the other side. Yes, please. I have been asked to translate three questions by Greek satsangis who were not able to come to New Delhi. May I read them to you? The first question concerns karma. The Satsangi asks, uh, I belong to a family whose members have been in constant war with each other and I have been everybody's target. My own mother has turned out to be my worst enemy. I finally decided to break off my relationships with my family and withdraw into myself in order to survive. I only perform what I consider it to be, my, to be my duty to them. If 
by keeping a distance from my family, I do not pay off my bad karma in this life. Do I have to come back to this plane and live with a similar family in another life? Would you advise me, therefore, to return to my present family and endure all the pain they caused to me? Sister, it's very difficult to sit on any, anybody's family problems in judgment. I don't know whether it is the son's fault or the mother's fault. Unless you hear both sides, you can never know the whole situation at all. Because everybody justifies one's own attitude, one's own actions, doesn't like to consider another person's attitude. Mothers are always loving. I'm yet to know a mother who is not fond of her children. It's a question of understanding her. She may not be knowing how to express herself. She may be overzealous to explain him and may not be knowing what is good for him. But no mother is against the son. Well, I can't uh, give him advice, do this or do that, leave her and leave that and all that, you see. He should know his own problem and solve himself. May I proceed? And question of coming back to this family or that family depends upon one's own karma. It's not in one's choice. Okay, the next question is, since we have proof in our daily lives that you love us, you protect us, you give us what we ask for, why do you deprive us of the most essential thing? Why don't you give us any signs of progress in meditation? How can I make the final journey without knowing? How can I die? Well, well, sister, I well, sister, we know it also, we experience it also, and we feel it also. Absolutely, it's not that we don't know anything at all. We definitely experience, we know, and we feel the progress. She also, he or she, I don't know who it is, also has a final question. Is it possible that you are not the one who gives all the things that I mentioned above? I think... I, I don't know what, to, what, what he means. Well, uh, I, I, I have no right to judge. I tried to revise the question and uh, translate it properly. It seems to me there's a certain amount of skepticism the person has been going on through some pain and she even doubts that you are the giver of protection, love and uh, these small things that you do for us every day. Well, the protection and the love is all within, not a question of any protection outside. And has to live one's own life with one's best judgment. And uh, protection is in meditation within, those who meditate. Those who don't meditate, what do they know about the protection? Uh, the third question is, how can I pay off karma since my meditation is not what it should be? Despite my efforts, I have no proof that I can rely on it. Without your help, my own efforts are vain. Yet, I cannot stop meditating. What is wrong with me? Please tell me so that I may improve myself. Well, I can only say that he should continue. Continue. May I ask a question for myself, please? Yes, yes please. Um, I have read in the Sanmat books that uh, if a person is being slandered by other people, this is a kind of blessing in disguise. So my question is, why and how is this blessing? I don't know, sister. The main definition of blessing is one Something which turns us towards the Father, it's a blessing. Something which keeps us away from the Father, that's not a blessing. Now you can weigh in that, from that point of view. Anything which turns our attention towards the Father, reminds us of the Father, reminds us of our home, pulls us towards our home, and attracts us towards our home, it's his blessing. Anything which keeps us attached to this creation, I won't call it a blessing. You, you may think the Lord has given me ten million of dollars, it is a blessing. I won't call it a blessing. That may keep you attached to this creation forever. 
you may think that god has blessed me with four five beautiful children healthy children and i love them all it may not be his blessings you may be so much absorbed in their love that you may not may even forget the father i won't call it a blessing any death in the family which can turn you towards the father father may be his blessing so it's very painful to know these things anything which turns us towards him his blessing anything which keeps us away from him is not his blessing in that light you can weigh yourself what is blessing and what's not blessing from some part point of view thank you you have answered my question thank you very much Master, many years ago, I had a friend whose son was hurt in a um, drowning accident or near drowning accident, and he was in a coma for about five or six years, and then he passed away. And then this year, a patient of mine was hit by a car and also was in a coma for a very long time. While checking her, I was wondering where her soul was at that time. What happens to, to a body that has a loss of consciousness for many, many years? Where is the soul at that the time? The sister, everybody has one's own karmas. can you experience karma as long as one dies i mean one doesn't die soul always remain in the body so the soul is experiencing karma somewhere soul doesn't leave the body unless the unless person dies okay, it so remains within the body and and is it experiencing anything or learning anything at that time what are we learning we are, what are we learning with all our consciousness <laughs> what are what have we learned in life that's a good question knowing everything repeating the same mistakes again and again Knowing everything, the Lord is within us. He is rightly seeing us. What we are doing, what we don't do, what are we learning? And I have one other question: Is it okay to continuously repeat Simran during the day while you're checking patients or working, even though your mind is active with other things? Is well, it? Well, if your mind is in one direction, how can you do Simran? It's always going. Whenever on. mind is free, then you can do Simran. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Swami. Last year in October, I asked you a question about my job and the necessity of being baptized in the Protestant faith. You told me it's okay for me to get baptized. I'm not baptized yet because I must go to church every week to discuss the Bible with the preacher there. I interpret the Bible with my son Matt background, and the problem is that he wanted to know where from I know so much. He never. <laughs> He never heard such such explanations about the Bible before. He says, "I can't tell him I have a guru. What shall I do?" You can say by reading the Bible, I get this enlightenment. <laughs> you have also read the Bible. I have also read the Bible. That is your way of interpreting. This is my way of interpreting. Sabji, uh, I asked for an interview with you, but they said that uh, even though I've been to there uh, to. Delhi for five years. I never had one, and then they said no. So if I write you a letter, you'll answer every question. I always do it. Hmm. I try to answer every question, but sometimes questions are very strange, relating to personal problems and families and divorces and. This is only about meditation. Yes, of course, I never hesitate to answer any question on meditation. I personally mark those things. And I read the letters. I also wanted to thank you, and I ask. Uh, and I'll uh, take the opportunity of your, with reference to your letter. I am receiving so many letters now that I cannot attend to them. I have never said before, and I now just show my helplessness. Only write me brief, to the point, only concerning meditation. Enough. You have written about your family problem, about your children's problem, about your marriage problems. And think enough answers have gone, and the same answer I give to everybody. So your problems are also psychostyled. My answers are also psychostyled now. So if you have any problem in meditation, don't hesitate to write to me. I'll definitely attend to them. Otherwise, the family problem I read it and I mark it to the my staff to answer it. I said so many times I've answered this question in the same light. You can attend to them. I only have one problem. I have one desire to see you in each group. That's okay. Thank you. Yes. 
Arjun, have you heard of the song Don't Worry Be Happy? I haven't heard a song, but this is generally I say. <laughs> it's very, very popular song in the West right now. Very number one hit. And um, there's a girl who asked me, a lady who's not initiated, and she heard I was coming to India, and she asked me if I would ask you for your advice. Or advice or what? How can she be happy and not worry? She says, how can we cultivate contentment? Does he have any tricks or is there a, a technique? Or well, it's not an electric switch that I can put it on and off. It's a training of the mind, whole struggle with the mind for the whole life to train the mind to have that attitude. So, us saying you don't really have any excuse to worry. Well, well. No, but if worry solves any problem, do worry. <laughs> if it helps us, do worry. If it doesn't solve any problem, if it doesn't help us at all, if it makes more miserable, then why invite misery? If worry is of any use, then do worry. If there is no use at all, it makes us more miserable. Then why make ourselves more miserable? On one hand we have problem to face, on the other hand we start worrying about the problem. So we have two problems now. Because it creates tension. Hmm? It creates tension. Naturally, worry. worry is always a tension, nothing else. Worry is a tension. Thank you, Maharaji. Maharaji, several days ago you mentioned the eye camp. Are you still holding the eye camp every year at the Dara? I think we were supposed to send the report of the eye camp of this year. I don't know whether Madan Gopal has sent you or not. Yeah, he says we have already sent the report of this year. We had an eye camp in November as usual. And we have sent the report to all the representatives, you can share with them. Mm -hmm. So you don't offer that operation at the hospital? That what do you mean by operation? The operation you do on the eyes, at the eye camp. You camps. see, eye camps are very essential because hospital, we have 90 beds for the eye camp, you see, for the eyes. And one patient takes 10 days, you see, to locate the bed. Now you can think in one year how many operations we can do. Mm -hmm. So, 90 beds and one month, three in, you can multiply now into three, into 90, then multiply into 12. Mm -hmm. That would be the only number of the operations we can perform. In camp, we perform 6,000 operations. In what, just three weeks, Double the number of the operation which the hospital will perform in one year. Mm. Even trouble. The complicated cases we send to the hospital. Cataract or other minor ailments, atracoma and other things, we just, you see, attend to them in the camps. Yes, Thank you. And I'd like to say that I know going to Dara is a devotional experience and a unique opportunity for meditation and I would like to express my desire that the brothers and sisters that have the opportunity to go up there now I hope that they can experience that to the fullest. I don't know because they are going at such a time when the data is very noisy mm -hmm. because so many people are coming then they move about on the roads then they all activities start at three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. And naturally they all disturb the peace of the Dera. Off days, off satsang days, off Bandara days, it's very, very peaceful, quiet. Daytime, even night time. But in the Bandara days, now probably by the time I reach there, hardly 10, 12 days will be left in the Bandara. So people must have started coming even in my absence. Then they another, take another 10, 15 days to go. So this three weeks is a hub of activity in the Dera. So whether you get that peaceful atmosphere or meditation, it depends on the individuals. Well, I've heard you say so often that the dera is more than brick and mortar. That's right. And it's a wonderful That's thing right. that we can take home with us. That's right. And it, has, it has something to show us, to tell us. 
which can't be described by words. It is something to see, to believe, I would say. What there is. How people serve, how people are being served, how they live together, so many people, how they keep it clean so much. Who does it? I myself even don't know. You are going there? No, Maharaji, not you're, this you're time. You have been there? I have been once, yes. Oh, then, then there's no problem with you. No, understand. there's not. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be with you these past several years, for you availing yourself to me and everyone else. Thank you. Thank and I really like your socks. <laughs> <laughs> Master, a couple of years ago, I decided to sing Simran silently inside. Is that okay? What do you mean by sing Simran? Inside, just kind of a little musical thing provided, inside. Provided your mind is nowhere outside. It's okay. Not in the musical, not in the lost in music, but it is 100% concentrated, then you can sing even, dance even. Mm. But if it runs out in singing or in the music, then there's no use. Well, I think I n began to notice that it was kind of wandering too much then, out. Then, 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 sisters, then no it's use. just better to just speak the words yes, silently yes, inside. Yes, yes, repeat the words. <laughs> and be, be in them. <laughs> I love you, Master, as much as I can. I want to love you only. Thank you, thank you. Maharaji, Father Swami, what does it mean that real spiritual experiences can be repeated at will? Well, sister, if you are driving from here to Bias and you see all the scenes in the way, then naturally next time, first time you have a guide to go with you, next time at your own will you can drive on the same road and see all those things again and again. So the spiritual experiences can be repeated at will. What is the problem in that? Well, I always thought that, that certain experiences are caused by grace and that we can't use our willpower to create concentration. No, no question. You see, we must have full concentration before we can have those spiritual experiences. Without the full concentration, we can't have those spiritual experiences. When we achieve the full concentration, will it stay or will it sometimes slip down again? Well, sometimes it slips down also. It stays there, it slips down also. Because mind is always wavering, mind is always shaky. It becomes steady slowly and slowly with practice. That is why you see the flashes of light, not the light itself. The light, it's, it's light is always there. There are no flashes there. There is only a light. It is the mind which goes there, see the light, comes down and see the darkness. So we think there is a flash of light. Actually there are no flashes of light. There is only light, nothing else but light. This is the mind which is shaky, comes and goes. Master, I am suffering out of the rule of the mind and uh, I realized in the last two years uh, that I am um, totally powerless and the only thing I can do is to, to leave myself in your hand, to leave myself under your protection. Well, brother, attend to meditation and leave yourself to the Father's protection. He's looking after every one of us. Master, I'm not yet initiated. Don't worry. I'm too young, you said, and you said I'm... Uh... Then grow. <laughs> no, uh, please tell me at which age I can uh, apply for uh, initiation. Then you'll be able to grow. What's your age now? Uh, in, at 9th April I will become 21. All right, grow few years more, don't worry. You understand what you want. 
I'm uh, ready to wait as long as you want. All right, then. But uh, I hope that I will be enough made sure when I uh, become initiated so that I can become a perfect Guru Bhakta. That's right. And one thing I want to tell you now, I'm afraid of my mind. We are all please, afraid of our mind. Please uh, take care of me. I will, I will leave everything to you. I can't do anything more now. Thank you, thank you. Don't worry. Um, Maharaji, a sister from home has asked if you would explain an excerpt out of Sarbachan. May I read it? Well, read it. It is since long I have read Sarbachan. Perhaps once in life when it was going to print. It says that the Satguru says that the testimony of the Lord can be given if there be a bhakta with sufficient love and devotion. Nobody has sufficient love or bhakti to deserve testimony. What you are doing is merely imitation. But worry not, such is the maosh this time, and even thus all shall be taken across. What is the problem? Well, actually, it's not my, my problem. <laughs> A sister at home has asked me. Uh, it might be, what is the testimony, and what does it mean that um, what you are doing is merely imitation? Mean, you see, we feel love and devotion seeing others. We are impressed. We feel love and see when we see other people in love and see love for the Master. When we find masses are love for the Master, and we find them running after the Master, we find tears in their eyes, we also feel that love. This is an imitation of love. It does not come from within you. It has come seeing them in you. It must come from you from within. Other people should not be able to impress you to create that love and devotion in you. This is a sort of intellectual love. Seeing others in love, you are also like to love. So you try to think that you also love. So tears come, feelings come. But real love must come from within, irrespective of whether they love the Master or not. That should not concern you at all. It is your individual conviction, individual feeling emotions within. That's what he means. But it is up to the Master to give the disciple that? That is a different question. Seed is always sown by the Father. That is said in the morning. I mean before that. I learned some people have jobs to go back. They are trying to, I mean, get rid of their job. This is not a right attitude. Santman doesn't teach us that. They have commitment with certain jobs. They want to get rid of those jobs. They must go to Dera. No, it's not right thing to do. They can get another opportunity to come. Why should they leave their jobs? It's not so easy to get those jobs back again. Dera doesn't want us to run away from our responsibilities and obligations or from our family lives. I learned somebody receiving a telegram from my husband that I'll divorce you if you won't come back and you have not asked me my permission even to go. Such things should not happen with the Sangis. It's wrong. It gives the wrong impression to Sangis. We don't want to people to, I mean, the Sangis to run away from their responsibilities, their obligations. And they have to decide themselves. We don't want to order them. But it doesn't reflect good on the satsang. Anyway. Maharaji, um, thank you for visiting this session and always. And I, would, I just, um, I tried not to ask any questions this time, but I just couldn't resist this one that came up a second time when the sister asked if it's all right for her to repeat Simran with a part of her attention when she's attending to her patients. And it reminds me of, I think it's Professor Bhatnagar's um, reading to us years ago where he said that a true satsangi always either has the master's form before his eyes or the simran on his tongue. Sister, when you are mentally free. Or one, or hearing the shabad and if you're not doing one of those three things. But how, how can you do when you're sleeping? Well, I think that you can do it when you're sleeping too. Well, how? Because if your attention is up but anyway, in the beginning, can't you try to do, if she says she's doing... Sister, her, don't take these things literally. It means generally one should, master should always be in your mind, 
whenever you are free, you should, your mind should be in the similar. You should live in the atmosphere of something. It doesn't mean that you don't have to look after your child, look after your job, or you don't have to drive, you don't have to talk to anybody. That doesn't mean that you have to run away from, your, from everybody. No, but I think that once the mind becomes absorbed in Simran, to some extent, that it's able to do it in the background. I think Sambhusa told us that in our initiation. That it can happen. It can so happen. in that case, shouldn't we strive to do Simran well, 24? Well, do it if it suits you. Well, I would just like somehow that... There's nothing wrong difficult. in doing it, but not at the cost of the patient. But if we feel confident that we're able to do it along with our daily... Well, do it. Do it if you can. Thank you, Radha.